Rodney, I got to admit, one of the things that impressed me so much about your documentary was the fact that you traveled all over the world to get the, the uh, expert opinions. Absolutely, Ty. We traveled the globe, but one of my favorite places that we visited was Helsinki. The studies that get funded are the studies that have a drug at the end of the rainbow or some saleable product, and that will never happen with food. So I believe that there would never have been any studies completed on the power of food until I heard about one veterinary researcher coming out of Finland who had been doing independent pet food research for 15 years. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be a part of this team. This team is the first team, I think, in the whole world that is studying raw food, uh, different kind of foods and animals with diseases. I'm very, very happy to be a part of this team. My name is Anna Jan Bjorkman. I work at the University of Helsinki at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. And uh, I, my position here is a senior researcher. And I do teaching, but 80% of my time goes to research at the moment. My burning interest is in animal nutrition, especially dog nutrition, and the association between nutrition and disease. So I like curing and preventing, and not so much into treating. There is no, no other group doing this kind of research, studying raw and dry food and comparing them how they affect the gene expression. So I think that uh, the most interesting thing is the gene expression. And that is like, how does the nutrients and the environment uh, kind of work on your DNA? The research that I uh, am performing here in this faculty is a canine metabolomics project. And what that means is that we have targeted a certain set of metabolites that can be found in blood and urine samples and we can measure their concentrations very accurately. And what we can do is then measure their, the concentrations of these metabolites before they have been introduced to a certain type of diet and after. And then we can try to piece together why there are such large changes between these two groups based on what the dogs have been eating. So we had a lot of uh, surprising findings. Uh, when we were looking at, at raw food and dry food. I knew it was better, but I had no clue why. And now we're actually finding so many different facets of, of differences, uh, that there is differences in gene expression due to the nutrition, there's uh, differences in uh, uh, gut microbiota, there's differences in, some of them are totally no-brainers because, I mean, when you change the diet, a lot of things will happen. But just that there is such a big impact on, on positive things from the raw food and then actually the negative sides from, from cooked and processed food. And I think it is the same that, that we can see in human foods. Now, it, what was very fascinating to me was our talk yesterday with Anna. Like, so just how much do you need to actually see some benefit? Right. Should I get in her office? I'm gonna, listen, I'm going to go into her office. And so I was telling the people here at, in my Facebook world that you were saying yesterday that from your studies, that just a little bit of raw, you guys were seeing some benefits. How much? So we, did, we were looking at if they gave 10, 20, 30, 40, and up to 100 percent. Right. And, and uh, we were looking at where does it start to change uh, from increasing the, the odds to, to disease to, to decreasing them. And, and it seems to be about 20 percent. So that's one fifth of the, of the food. 20 percent. So literally, that's all it took was just a 20% of a little bit of raw food into a diet, and you were seeing some yeah. results. Luckily enough, we were able to have, in the small set of metabolites we we're looking at, many that had to do with the methylation pathway. Now, the methylation pathway has really important roles with detoxification processes in the body, as well as immune uh, regulation. And we saw big changes between the two groups, which definitely indicates that there could be something behind the assumption that health and the food that the dog is eating are intrinsically linked. Well, homocysteine uh, is a is a you can say it's a marker for inflammation, 
and also a marker is being said to be a marker for, for cancer. If you think about it as a metabolic disease, it makes sense. So this is something that you would like to see less in the body. The homocysteine was much higher in the blood of dried food pet dogs. Homocysteine is related to many diseases if it's higher in the bloodstreams. So what we've done is when we've looked at the, the um, end products of, of uh, metabolism, that's what we call metabolomics, uh, we've been seeing that in the raw food group you have much less uh, homocysteine. These biomarkers that we've been looking at for as signs of inflammation went up in the dogs that switched over to dry food and went down or remained more or less the same in uh, dogs that had switched over to raw food. So let's summarize this study with a visual. This research project broke down dogs into four different research groups. Group one were previously raw fed dogs that just continued eating raw food. Group two were dry fed dogs that just continued eating dry food. Group three were raw fed dogs that then were switched to dry food. And group four were dry fed dogs that were then switched to raw food. At the end of the feeding trial, all of the dogs had their disease markers evaluated, including homocysteine. Not surprisingly, the raw fed dogs that continued to eat raw food had the lowest levels of a homocysteine at 0.17 micromolars. And the dogs that were eating dry food and continued to eat dry food had the highest levels of homocysteine at 1.57 micromolars, which was 10 times more than the raw fed group. Here's where it gets really interesting. Raw fed dogs that then were fed dry food had a five-fold increase in their levels of homocysteine. And dry fed dogs that were weaned onto raw food had a dramatic decrease in their homocysteine levels, coming in at 0.3 micromolars. And this is why we had to jump on a plane and travel halfway across the world. Dr. Anna Bjorgman and her team were conducting studies that we've been asking here in North America for years as pet owners. Is there a difference when you feed your animal processed food or fresh food? Judging from the results, absolutely there is. It's wonderful to see the validation that feeding fresh food is a lot better for you and for your pet in the long term than feeding processed food. We hope that these studies will also inspire more studies to be conducted here in North America to validate the benefits of feeding fresh whole life foods. Finally, I saved this little gem here for last. Here's a survey conducted by Dr. Anna Hjelm Bjorkman and her team on over 10,000 dogs. Now, what you're seeing here on the right-hand panel, the lower the number, the less incidence there is of cancer. And going by the results in the chart, dogs who were fed commercial raw pet food had a lower incidence of cancer compared to those dogs fed dry commercial pet food. And now check out this little bonus. Here on the bottom, dogs that had omega-3 fatty acids supplemented into their food lessened the risk of cancer even more. So that shows you that there is an inflammation going on in the dogs that eat the dry food, whereas you don't see it in the raw food groups. So if there's anything that I've learned while working here, it is that food definitely has a huge role on health, along with exercise. Now, food is something that hasn't really been regarded as a good medicine, but it does seem that a lot of diseases and ailments are directly linked to what the dog is eating. And so I think that it's incredibly important. And I think that's a good starting point for any type of um, diagnosis. And so as you can see, Ty, from Helsinki, nutrition and food is critical when you have illness or even before you're ill. Yeah, absolutely, Rod. It was a great segment. I was really impressed with your research there and your travels. And one question, what, what do animals eat in the wild? And what are their cancer rates in the wild?